What's it like to travel as a YouTuber and is it worth it? This is a question I got recently from Ken Lee 7292 where Ken said, hey, that brings me to another question I really want to ask. What's the key differences of traveling as a YouTuber versus a normal tourist? And uh, what do you do with planning? What about the equipment? Do you think you miss anything? And so that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. Um, and so first, let's go ahead and start with how I'm gonna talk about this. And I thought, well, how better to talk about what it's like to travel as a YouTuber than telling you about my most recent trip. No videos on it yet because I just got back yesterday. We took a two night Disney cruise from San Diego, California to Ensenada, Mexico. And so I thought I would just kind of tell you about the behind the scenes of this trip, what it was like to plan it, what it was like to travel, uh, and then we can talk about is it is it worth it or not. Uh, and so first on the note of like planning, like for us planning trips to plan the Disney cruise, we booked or planned this trip about five months out. So we sailed it here in November and uh, we booked it in uh, May, June timeframe, which is fairly typical for us for international trips. That tends to be about how far out we book our big international trips. Now our general decision matrix to like, how do we decide where to go? It just has three main parts to our like decision-making triangle. The first one is where do we want to go? Like what are the places we want to go to? And so we start with that list and then we go uh, to, are the prices good? Uh, and then we go to three, are, are we going to be able to make interesting videos there? And so I guess that's definitely one of the big, um, right, as the YouTuber thing, we've got that leg to be like, is this an interesting video destination or not? Um, now, side note on this, uh, people often ask about Google ad revenue and all those things. And so the most interesting destinations, in my opinion, tend to make the least amount of money. And why is that? Well, some of the like most interesting destinations, for example, in Japan or someplace like that, are the least known. And so they have the least like advertising keywords that will go next to them. Um, and traveling, it turns out is expensive, which is why you see many YouTubers making a lot of their videos in um, lower cost destinations like India, like Southeast Asia, or you see them backpacking a lot, um, especially if they're looking at uh, like making a YouTube video as an investment return. Um, which is which is not not really how we view it. Uh, we generally view it where we try to fit videos into the places that we already want to go, and we're generally not doing anything like um, Mr. Beast, where he's making videos just to make YouTube videos. Like we have zero desire to bury ourselves alive, <laughs> and so we're like, how can we enjoy things, make videos about it? Because we think we'll make better content um, if we do that. And so in the case of this particular trip that we just came back on. Uh, we have a three-year-old daughter and we thought it'd be cool to take her on a Disney cruise. We've never been on a Disney cruise ourselves. We've heard a lot of good things about it. We live in Orange County, California, which is just a 90 minute drive down to San Diego, um, which meant that we could just drive to get our Disney cruise. We didn't have to fly, which went mean save a lot of money. It'd be easier. Um, the majority of Disney cruises go out of Florida. Uh, but that's gonna take us a lot more time and a lot more money to get there. And so that's how we ended up on the two night Disney cruise to Ensenada. Was Ensenada on the top of our list? You know, when we were looking at prices, uh, the other options out of San Diego, there's like longer cruises down to Mexico and there's also cruises from San Diego up to Vancouver. Like you can go a lot of other places, but um, the, uh, the Ensenada cruise turned out to be the cheapest, not the cheapest per day. Actually the cheapest was they were a similar price to go from San Diego to Ensenada for two nights on a Disney cruise as to go from San Diego to Vancouver for four nights. Um, but that one's a one-way cruise. And uh, the, what, so Chris, what is the price? Uh, the total for us for two adults and a three-year-old child was about $2,000. I With taxes, it was like 2,200 and something, something, something. That was for a deluxe ocean view stateroom, one that has a window that you look out on, but not one that has a balcony. 
Um, and as we were deciding between the price tier, Ensenada and Vancouver, we had been, we've been to both places. We've been to Vancouver a couple times most recently and we haven't been to Ensenada in 10 years and that was before we were really YouTubers and so we didn't really make a video on Ensenada. So we figured we could make a video on the cruise and a video on Ensenada. And so there we go. That's how we uh, ended up on that. And also uh, two nights, four nights, you know, we figured two nights is probably pretty sufficient to capture everything we want to make a Disney cruise video. Four nights is not gonna um, substantially add a lot more to the video. Uh, and um, now I wanna tell you a little bit about the planning process, like once we booked it, then how we decided what we we're gonna do or things like that. Um, but before I do that, I wanna take a few comments on the live stream. Remy says, we went on the Disney Dream earlier this year, fun but expensive. Expensive Disney cruises. Uh, do, do cost a lot of money. You know, that branding for uh, Mickey um, isn't cheap. Uh, Kathy says Disney Wonder is in Australia at the moment. Uh, Kathy is going to be going on the Disney Wonder tomorrow. So that's great. And uh, Kathy says Disney Cruise are popular. So your videos on this one will do well. I hope so. I hope I, I hope I get to like tap into an untapped cruise, cruise, cruise viewers. Uh, like I know we've got some here, um, but uh, you know, when I, when it's another one where like, when I look at destinations and be like, should we go there? Should we make a video on it? I also look at how good the other videos on YouTube are. And I'm like, oh, there's already a phenomenal video on this destination. Maybe I don't need to service it. Maybe I'll service the one that already doesn't, doesn't have um, phenomenal videos. And uh, Barris says, my parents are on a seven day Mexican Riviera cruise on the Norwegian Bliss. Uh, say hi to Matthew. Welcome to the live stream, Matthew. Uh, he says, I love eating so much on a cruise. All inclusive buffets, things like that. So yes, you can definitely fill your belly. Uh, and Alex says, imagine Disney related trips being spendy. Imagine that. Okay, so what's the planning process for us look like? Um, well, we, uh, there were like, two sets of videos that I needed to plan or two sets of things I needed to plan. So one is the like plan the cruise experience and then two is plan the like the day in Ensenada or the port visit experience. So those were two different things. And whenever we go on a trip, uh, the way I generally do our planning is I do a Google Doc um, for each of our destinations. So this is our Google Doc about the Disney cruise. And basically as I'm just researching things and finding things out, I start filling out this Google document, which then ends up making the body of the video that we record. Uh, if I was maybe just traveling like a normal tourist, I might not be writing a Google doc with all these little things about what's included in your room or what's not included in your room. I would say all together, between um, you know watching YouTube videos, reading things, listening to things, I probably spent about 10 hours planning for our time on the Disney cruise. Uh, as a normal term tourist, I might just book the cruise and show up and go with it. Uh, but also with only two days, we had to like hit the ground running uh, and not be like discovering a lot on the ship. We had to like kind of know where we were going to make sure we didn't like miss anything that would be like super cool for the video. Now, we also had to plan our day in Ensenada, Mexico. Um, I allocated less prep time to Ensenada because we've been to Ensenada a couple times in the past, so I already had a little bit of familiarity with the place. Instead of spending 10 hours on it, I probably spent about five hours on Ensenada. Um, a big part of the cruise experience are the excursions that you can book just as part of the ship where they'll take you places, and we, we looked at those oh so briefly on the Disney Cruise website. You know, we could take a tour to uh, the blowhole in Ensenada. We could take a tour to Rosarito to have a lobster lunch. We could take a walking tour of the city center of Ensenada. None of those really work as a YouTuber uh, because none of those have enough time allocated to like stop and make a video on it. And if I was doing that on an organized tour, people would just think I'm weird. Okay, I'm weird. It doesn't really matter what they think I'm weird, but I would annoy them. And so I don't want to annoy the rest of the tour group. And so we generally have to like go off and do things ourselves. That's probably another one of those like differences between a normal tourist and a YouTuber organized, like in a perfect world, maybe I would take the organized tour on day one. So like I'd learn about the place from them and then I'd come back and shoot it the next day. Um, unfortunately, that's typically not a reality on time-wise on uh, most trips. So to plan in Sonata, uh, I like to use Google Maps and on Google Maps, I will put these different pins. And so I'm gonna make this bigger and you can see on here, there are four of these little green flags. Uh, those were 
four major attractions that we want to go to. The cruise port of Ensenada. Oh, this is hard. The cruise port of Ensenada is just right over here where you see the ship icon. Uh, our first stop was to, in about the middle of the screen, go to La Gurense, uh, which was a little street cart that specializes in ceviche tostadas. Then we headed over to Tacos Phoenix, which is the originator of the fried fish taco or the Baja style fish taco uh, or the Ensenada style fish taco. It has a few different names. Then we were going to check out the Mercado Negro, which is the fish market in Ensenada, end up at this bar Andalus, which was the bar that invented the margarita. So what makes this plan different from, uh, I don't know, a normal tourist plan? Did we have to walk all the way over to Tacos Phoenix to get the fish tacos there? Because I'm sure the fish tacos a lot of other places taste just as good as that one. We're making a video, and so it's better to go to the place that invented the fish taco. Same with the margarita. Plenty of places that serve margaritas, uh, but we needed to go to the original one. Uh, you know, we might have gone to those places as normal tourists too, but we definitely would have uh, probably been able to fit in more places had we not been making videos about them, because now I don't just have to eat my food, but I have to make videos about my food. I have to shoot a thumbnail. I have to shoot a short. This isn't woe is me, but it just becomes on a typical trip like this for six hours, we might be able to fit in four destinations where other people might be able to fit in to um, six destinations or more. Uh, Points Traveler says, did you get the margarita? Yes, we did get the margarita. As many of you know, I am not uh, I wouldn't consider myself a lush in any way when it comes to drinking, but when in Rome. Um, so yes, I had the margarita from the bar that originated margaritas. Uh, travel Jack says, as a content creator, I prefer solo travel. As a content creator, that generally works much better than group travel. I agree. Um, and uh, Angie says, I think spending time researching is half the fun, especially with Disney related trips. Yeah, and I think like the, the world is divided on this. Like is travel planning fun or is travel planning not fun? What I thought was odd about the Disney cruise is they, um, they don't publish a schedule of the things on the Disney cruise. So like there's like shows and all these things and like you can't see when they are until you board the ship. And when you board the ship, then you can go on the app and you can see all the different things they have on the ship. But as another planner, it was kind of like harder to plan out our ship time when we didn't know what we were gonna do like until we got there. But that's okay, we got there and then uh, went ahead and formed our plan. <laughs> but so, right, in particular, this difference of being the YouTuber and having to go to the place that invented the fish taco. As we're walking to Tacos Phoenix, it's definitely out of the it's definitely out of the touristy part of Ensenada. Like the touristy part of Ensenada um, is like all the streets are very paved, the signs are nice, and you know once we get off that main street and turn left to go down to Taco Phoenix, boy, the uh, the stray dogs come out, the uh, the pavement um, ends, the uh, potholes become about six feet deep. So we weren't sure whether we were walking to something that was like as you know Osago and I like a really really hope these fish tacos are good for we're rocking down there uh and luckily we got there you know and we like we met other people that watch yellow productions and now they were on the disney cruise and so um then we realized we were absolutely in the right place um but i think that that this is one where like as we're ordering the fish taco and then as so we get the two fish tacos well we can't eat it right away okay okay oc girl take the camera out of my bag take the camera turn on the recording let me talk about the taco let me eat the taco Okay, put the camera away. Let's eat the rest of our fish tacos. Now we need to record the shrimp tacos. Let's get the shrimp tacos, take the camera out, record eating eating the shrimp tacos um, in a place that's all on the sidewalk or something like that too. And somebody wearing a Pikachu hat right there, which is great. Um, so on the note of planning, Joe says, I like travel planning more fun than actual traveling. Uh, Kathy says, I spend hours and hours planning a holiday. Uh, and Kat says, on both days, did you videotape constantly from morning to evening. I mean, constantly would imply like that the camera was always rolling and I never turned it off. Um, but I generally had my camera with me most times. There's a time when I didn't uh, and we'll, we'll talk about what that time is. Okay, um, so let's talk about like the equipment that I carry around because that was one of Ken's original questions. And so on this trip, I brought three cameras with us. Um, I'm not going to redo my whole equipment video, but I'm just going to hold these up, which is I brought my Sony Ob, Sony FDR AX53 camcorder. This is the one that we shoot most of our A-roll scenes on. 
This has the wireless mic that goes with it. So this is the one that OC Girl is typically running most of the time. If you see the hotel reviews and you see her in a mirror, she'll typically be holding this one. So if we wanna get our highest quality footage, that's what we're using. That's what we use to film the entire day in Ensenada. Um, for some of the walking tours that I do, like I did a full walking tour of the Disney Magic cruise ship, and also a walking tour of the Ensenada Harbor. In that case, I used the DJI Osmo 3, which also has a little wireless mic that goes with it in this little case. I like this one because it's small, it's not obnoxious, and is it weird to see my mouth twice like this? Yeah, that's kind of weird. Uh, okay, and then the third uh, third camera was, uh, was my cell phone, the Galaxy S23 Ultra. This one is great because it's in my pocket, and I can just pull it out whenever I need to. This is mostly B-roll, so like the scenes that are not of me talking, but I just like wanna record like food or things like that, um, then I use uh, for this, cause I can just, I can have it uh, in my pocket all the time. But these other cameras I would carry in my shoulder bag and I'd have them everywhere I go. So if I go to breakfast, I'm bringing these with me. I'm going to dinner, I'm bringing these with me because I never know when I wanna record something and which one I need to record something. Oh, what's in this bag? Uh, for the cell phone to record audio, then I'm also carrying around this uh, DJI um, microphone kit that, whoop, <laughs> that plugs into the, the cell phone to record audio. Okay. Um, so yes, it's definitely it's definitely heavier than not carrying it around because OC Girl was with me on this trip. I didn't have any like tripods or selfie sticks or things like that. If I'm going by myself, then I'll bring some of those things too so I can put cameras places and um, just talk to myself. Now for six hours in Ensenada as a normal tourist, I probably wouldn't even take a bag. I would probably just like fit whatever I could have in my cargo shorts and walk around town uh, for the day. Um, and yes, uh, carrying camera gear through security checkpoints is a real pain, <laughs> especially when you have a lot of them. You know, like if you just have one camera, people are like, oh, okay. But then you're like, what's this? And what's this? And what's this? And why do you have these? And, um, you know, so especially when I take the, the gimbal, when I take the big gimbal, like that's one where I've been through a few security checkpoints with my gigantic gimbal from my Sony a7S III, like when I was doing Christmas light videos last year and to go to Enchant Las Vegas uh, at Resorts World, you had to go through a security checkpoint and see the Christmas lights. I know, um, but they like, they really questioned the gimbal and they had to go find somebody else to like find out if they could bring the gimbal. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm trying to make a video. It's, it's gonna be okay. It's not a weapon, it doesn't explode. It'll be fine. Um, Points Traveler asks, how often do you use the 360 camera? Rarely. I use the 360 camera rarely. Like if I need a specialty shot, like I'm, I generally do it more like action scenes, like I'm uh, on a bicycle or if I was um, snow sledding or something like that, then I would hold it because then you don't need to point it and that's what, and then you can crop the thing out, but that's, a, that's about the only time I use it. It's kind of like the drone here. Like I only use that for like a specialty shot. I try not to overuse it because drone shots are overused, but I'm like, if I'm doing a video about almond blossoms, I'll take this thing out. And so then Franco asks if I ever get in trouble for flying the drone. No, because I only fly in like really unpopulated places where there'd be nobody, <laughs> there's like nobody watching me to get me in trouble kind of to shoot the nature scenes. I will not fly the drone in any real populated area because that's the one where people are like, why do you have this drone around? Uh, Alex says, you must have a ball at the airport checkpoints. Yes, that's one security officer I think described it sufficiently when he went to the x-ray and pulled it out for secondary inspection. He's like, uh, you look like you have a Best Buy shelf in there, which for those who don't know in the USA, Best Buy is a big electronic store. So yes, I have a Best Buy shelf in there. And I gotta carry it all in my backpack because I'm not putting any of this expensive travel gear in my check-in luggage. Uh, and then sure enough, because they all have like lithium batteries in it, you're generally not authorized to carry that stuff into, um, you're not allowed to um, check it in anyway. Brian says, uh, have you ever considered getting a drone? Right here, the DJI Mini 2 is the drone that I have. Uh, Angie says, that's a lot to carry around. Appreciate you making these videos. It is my pleasure, absolutely. Uh, and Travel Jack says, I've been seeing good reviews for the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. I really like it. I really like the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, so you could take it from me. This is a good camera. You, if you want to see what it looks like in action, you can see my Chinatown walking tour or my Olvera Street walking tour that I published in the last week or two. Those were shot on the Osmo Pocket 3, 
or you can stay tuned for the Disney or Ensenada videos that are going to be coming out in the near, near future. Okay. The other hassle with carrying all this gear around is then I need to charge it every night, which means there's a lot of things to charge, um, which means I generally need to bring extension cords because uh, or power strips because hotels really don't have enough power plugs to plug all this stuff in. Uh, and then two, I need to bring a... I need to bring a laptop with me, which is right back there, and I don't. My light is standing on it, so I don't. I don't want to take it out here. Um, but I've been, and I like, I have gotten in the habit of like trying to download all the footage from all my devices every night, so that if something gets lost or stolen, which is real or breaks, uh, that I've only lost the current day and not the previous day. Yes, I've been standing on trains in Japan with my laptop unloading SD cards before. Okay. Uh, let's go to Ken's next question, which was, do you do we still enjoy shopping and touring around? Uh, and this is us touring around the Disney Magic cruise ship, which we absolutely had a lot of fun just walking around and exploring the cruise ship. Um, some things we will film as we go. Uh, and so this goes to the earlier question of do you record all day? So getting on the cruise ship, like embarking it from the San Diego cruise ship terminal, I want to record what that experience was like. And that is not something I can do twice. That's something I can only do once because I'm only ever boarding the ship once. And once I've shown my passports, I can't like go back and do it again. And so in that case, I'm like live recording what this is. Um, and uh, other sometimes I'm holding the camera to record the experience. Other times, OC Girl is holding the camera to record me. Um, so like if there's a scene of like me and our princess walking onto the cruise ship, then we've stopped for a moment. I'm like, OC girl, can you hold this camera? Can you shoot us walking? Can you walk behind us and shoot it? So there's some like deliberate, like let's capture this scene because this scene embodies what's um, going on at this given time. And then those B-roll scenes you either see on top of some of the A-roll that I've shot talking in a place or I might record a voiceover later. In the case of the Disney Cruise, I'm going to have to record a lot of voiceovers uh, back here. Um, now, related to uh, shopping, uh, sure, we, we go shopping, though we tend to maybe buy less while we're out and about because our bag is already full with all those electronics gear, and so we don't have a ton of room or a ton of hands to like carry things that we buy, which often leads us on destinations to get a rental car, because if we have a rental car, it's easier to just like stuff that we buy or souvenirs put in the car, and then it's easier to like hold the gear in the car and not have to like carry it around all the time, all of it all the time. Um, when we do shopping, you know, sometimes OC girl, she might go shopping in a shop and I'll hang out in the street to record some of the scenes that I need. And, you know, we'll meet up an hour later. We do that, uh, too. Now, when don't I take the camera? So I don't, I actually, as much as I said, I have the cameras all the time. There are deliberate times when we're like, we're just gonna leave the cameras in the room or we're gonna leave the camera someplace else. So like on the Disney cruise, one of the big things is the pool. The pools are really neat. The water slides are pretty neat. Uh, this is the main water slide on um, the Disney Magic. And uh, I have a GoPro that's waterproof and I thought about taking the GoPro and I deliberately decided not to take the GoPro and just have the pool time be family time instead of recording time. And so uh, what you will not see is you will not see any um, scenes of us in the pool, uh, because for the couple hours that we spent around the pool and the pool deck and things like that, the cameras were back in the room just so we could, uh, enjoy that time. Um, <laughs> oh, Brandon said he loved my yellow Disney shirt. Yeah, I got that shirt a couple years ago, like downtown Disney. Uh, so I just, I had to bring it out to make my Disney, uh, cruise videos. Uh, Kathy says the same, uh, thing. Uh, and Kathy says, uh, cruise ships don't allow extension cords. What did you do to charge your gear? Uh, they don't. So I actually didn't carry my, um, I didn't carry my, what's the word I'm looking for? I didn't carry my power strip on the cruise ship. Uh, luckily, a lot of these are USB-C. And so I've got like one plug and five USB outlets on it. So I have like a couple of those. Um, so that charged a lot of my stuff. And they had about four plugs in the room. So uh, better than some rooms I've been in that only have too. Um, but you know, I just got to like move things around, uh, to make sure things get charged. Uh, and, uh, Adam from 2099. Thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it. Uh, Alex has got to leave the camera around to enjoy living in the moment as hard as that is. Yeah. Often when we travel, uh, it's like if we're on a big international trip, say we go to Japan or Singapore or something like that. 
um, then like my arrival day, I generally consider a non camera day. Generally in airports, I don't have the camera out. Generally on airplanes, I don't have the camera out because it just, it's just hard. It's hard to go through airports and record and this and that. And then it's just like burning, like burning out from just trying to record too much or having too aggressive of a schedule. Uh, it's real. It's super real. Uh, Sarai says, what different types of batteries and chargers do you travel with? Um, you know, so like, I mean, every one of these has a battery, right? The, you know, the Sony camera has a battery, the, the GoPro has a battery. And so for each of these things that have like batteries, then I've got to like bring the battery that comes with it. Um, most things nowadays charge via USB, which is nice. And so that's why I got the big USB plugs. I also have the like a 10,000 milliamp Samsung battery pack that's a Qi charger. So uh, it can charge like my cell phone while I'm out, um, which is good if I'm recording a lot of B-roll, I need to get some more juice, which I generally do. I'll usually need to charge this thing up a couple times uh, throughout the day. Um, Cottage Full of Love asks uh, or says, amazing how many other skills I could use this for the video that I'm trying to make. And so it's not like I have to wade through a bunch of stuff. It's more like that thing that I recorded that was gonna go with this voiceover, where is it? And just how do I um, put that in there? Um, okay, so uh, let's talk about food. Um, eating is definitely different as a YouTuber than a normal tourist. Normal people get their food and then they, they start to eat. Uh, we don't. <laughs> we get our food and then we gotta take pictures of our food and then we gotta, we gotta shoot B-roll of the food. I gotta spin the food round. I gotta zoom into the food and then I'll, hopefully the food is still warm and then oh, so go and hold the camera and then I can pick up the food and you know, maybe you can't see the food the way it is and so I gotta like hold the food like this so that you can see it with the camera and then take a bite of the food and then talk about the food as I'm doing that, which is also, it's really long if you watch me chew and then emote the food. And so sometimes I might have a little taste before I have the first taste so I know what it tastes like so I can say it a little bit. Like, is this good? Is this bad? Um, but, uh, and then, yeah, if you're, you know, like recording in restaurants on the Disney cruise, we were seated at a table with another family. And so, uh, we don't, again, I don't want to like ruin, I don't want to ruin their dinner by being the obnoxious guy recording a video and yammering at the table. Uh, so we didn't record, I'd prefer to record at the table and just say about things, but we didn't. Instead, I just recorded B-roll of all the food and then I'll record what I thought about it later here on the microphone. Just, it's another step uh, and it takes more work. Um, Kathy says, I love the Mickey ice cream and uh, Alex, yeah, that's, that's the Mickey ice cream. So this is a Definitely one of her favorite things on the cruise was the Mickey shaped ice cream. What's funny is they also put Mickey, they put sprinkles, the shape of Mickey on the Mickey ice cream bar. And at the table we were at, if you share a table with another family on the Disney cruise, you share that same table, like the whole cruise for all of your dinners. Uh, and the other family we were with, they had a two year old daughter. Uh, she really liked the sprinkles that was on the ice cream. And so our second night, uh, the, the family asked the server, they said, you know, we don't want the ice cream, but can we just have some of the sprinkles, the, like the Mickey shaped sprinkles on the ice cream bar? And sure enough, they brought them like a whole bowl of sprinkles, um, which is like, is like one of those Disney touches that like, what kind of restaurant is just gonna bring you a bunch of sprinkles? But uh, on the Disney cruise, they will bring you a whole bowl of sprinkles if that's what you want. Alex says, I hope you don't think I'm being facetious when you, I say you're my traveling hero, taking care of all the normal traveling stuff on top of being a YouTuber and dealing with a small child too. Oh, Alex, you are too kind. Uh, I'll give you $5 later for saying that, thanks. Um, and uh, Scott says, I know the feeling when filming food. I usually don't eat for at least three minutes after because of my table due to me filming everything. Scott, I know you film a lot of food stuff. Uh, and so yes, you gotta, like, you, gotta, you gotta get it, but then get it fast enough that like your food's not not all cold. Um, all right. So, uh, oh, one more thing about restaurants. We really hate restaurants with loud music or live entertainment because, you know, I can have a microphone, but even the world's best microphone isn't gonna cancel out the loudest music from the band that's right next to me. And so if it's a restaurant that has loud music or live entertainment, uh, we are typically just not gonna go there um, because we can't, we can't record anything while we're there. All right. 
Hotel rooms. Let's talk about hotel rooms. Um, most people, when they get to their hotel room, they just they hop on the bed or they take a shower or they start unpacking. We don't. When we get into a hotel room, we skillfully place our luggage and belongings in places that they're not too obnoxious because we need to shoot some video of the room. We need to shoot a room tour. We need to shoot our hotel review. And so the first you know, 15 or 20 minutes of us getting in a hotel room is room is shooting that footage even after we've gotten off a 14 hour flight that's what we're doing when we get to the hotel room regardless of how tired we are because there's only one time when a hotel room looks nice <laughs> that's when you first check in it's not the next day after you've slept in the bed and this and that nobody wants to watch that hotel review of the room unpacked uh and so that always becomes one to be like okay let's get let's just let's have enough gas in the tank to make sure we can do the room review before we can start to actually uh enjoy the room even harder stowing our stuff on a cruise ship to make it out of the way um luckily the bed was tall so we could put our luggage under the bed so that was a place to uh hide that away yeah and uh sorry says um and check for bed bugs you know uh i, I like i don't i don't bring the um I don't bring like the fluorescent light or things like that. Uh, but I mean, sure, it's always good to pull the sheets and make sure there's uh, nothing yucky under there. Kathy says related to the sprinkles, you can ask for anything on a Disney cruise. Yes, I think they are definitely a place where like, if you have a request, they try to say yes. Like I feel like that's part of their training um, as opposed to many places where they, they try to say no. And uh, Scott relates to my loud music. He says, I've been having to do voiceovers when that happens and it's annoying is what it is. Uh, all right, what's Chris is thirsty? What's Chris thinking today? Mm. I figured since I'm doing a video about Ensenada and I just got back from Ensenada, I should go have fish tacos today, <laughs> which I did. This is my favorite um, fish taco joint in Orange County. Uh, it's called Baja Fish Tacos. They got really good fish tacos, maybe like five or six locations in the OC. So if you're coming to my home county, definitely check out Baja Fish Tacos. Iced tea in there today. Probably should be horchata or jamaica or something, but uh, alas, it's tea. Okay, editing on the road. People, this is an assumption that people often make that is like a super incorrect assumption. Um, whenever I post videos of a destination, then there's always people who say something like, oh, if you're still here, I'd love to meet up. And I'm like, I'd love to meet up too. I'm not there anymore because <laughs> if I'm posting the video, I've brought it back home for me to edit, or I've sent the files to Yusaku to edit, and he takes some time to edit it, and so I am never in the destination editing and uploading the footage. I have tried that, and it drains the life out of me, because uh, now instead of like going to sleep when I get to the hotel room, I'm spending hours editing footage, and generally for YouTube video, it takes longer to edit the video than it does to shoot the video, and so at that point I'm like, it is not worth my vacation or travel time to edit. I should do that when I'm at home, not spending more money every night to stay in a hotel. Instead, I should do that when I'm back here. There are exceptions to this rule where like, um, you know, sometimes when I publish something like the day of or the next day is when I'm at Comic-Con. And then when I come home from Comic-Con or go to the hotel from Comic-Con, I will like, upload that right away because I'm like, this is super important, but it's it's pretty. Now, I also do use TripAdvisor though, but when I use TripAdvisor, if I'm staying at like a Marriott or I'm staying at a Hilton or a Hyatt, what I will search for is I will search for reviews that have like the um, elite name in there. So like Marriott Titanium, I'll search for, or Hyatt, I'll search for Globalist. Like I want to find the people reviewing hotels that it's not like, they're not like, this is a great hotel because they've only stayed in a hotel once in the last five years. And so they just like the fact that they don't have to clean it themselves. I'm definitely looking for the reviews of people who have reviewed a lot of hotels, which I think is definitely what also makes video reviews useful, especially if it's from someone you know and trust. You're like, I like their tastes or I don't like their tastes. Um, so uh, there we go. Okay. Um, another thing uh, that is a different experience about being a YouTuber is getting to meet tons of fans and interesting people and collaboration. So um, when I was on the Disney cruise ship, definitely Disney people are my people. 
a lot of Disney people watch Yellow Productions, or maybe I'm a Disney people. <laughs> so there were lots of people who came up to us on the Disney cruise and said, oh, I love your videos, and they get to meet OC Girl, and they get to meet our daughter. Um, and, uh, you know, then having my camera out in places, like when we were in Ensenada at the bar that invented the margarita, this guy uh, was hanging out there, and he uh, is kind of like a history buff in Ensenada. He makes replica armor, uh, and this day he was like doing sort of cosplay as Juan Cabrillo, uh, who is the person who discovered like San Diego, the first person to land in San Diego. There's a Cabrillo monument in San Diego. Here's a statue of Cabrillo. Uh, and so I got to chat with him for a little while, which is pretty cool. I've never interviewed somebody in a suit of armor before holding a sword <laughs> until, uh, until this weekend. Uh, and then collabs. You know, if you watch my Seal Beach video, I did a couple weeks ago with Pat Patterson. Never would have met that guy if I wasn't making YouTube videos. And it was cool to spend the day with him. I mean, a lot of other people I've done collabs with uh, that like we just like kind of meet up because we have like a common thing in common to to do this thing and uh, create videos for the internet. Now, um, I have a few other quick stories of other destinations before I get into the question of, so is it worth it? Um, and so uh, our big trip before the Sensenada trip was Singapore, Taiwan and Japan and OC Girl took our uh, daughter back to Taiwan. Um, her parents uh, live in Taiwan, so it was kind of a family trip for our daughter to see her grandparents. Um, and I, instead of going directly there for the first week, I went to Singapore for the first week because I wanted to make videos on Singapore. Singapore has been one of my uh, like most popular series in the past, but on YouTube videos tend to like age out for a while and then people don't watch them anymore. So that Singapore series needed a refresh. And sure enough, the Singapore videos are doing like super well. So I spent five days in Singapore solo um, creating that series, uh, but I, I think it was worth it because a lot of you are really enjoying those videos. When we went to Fukushima, Japan, right before the pandemic, uh, that was with the, uh, we were reached out to by the Fukushima uh, tourism department and they asked if we could come there and make videos on Fukushima and they like um, you know like all the restaurants we went to they told them we were coming they said uh, hey um, you know can you host them in the kitchen can you do this so we got to like access a lot of things that we wouldn't have had otherwise which was neat this was at a gyoza restaurant where the owner here you know I wrote the little like uh, hey I love your gyoza and that's on the wall at Terui in uh, Fukushima Japan if you go there <laughs> go find the yellow productions card that is on the wall and uh, when we did our trip uh, last year through the almond blossoms in Central California we did that, uh, Osi Girl and I, our daughter, uh, my brother-in-law, and uh, mother-in-law were on that trip. And it was a uh, it was a whirlwind trip because we wanted to see the almond blossoms kind of like the length of California's Central Valley. And we did from Bakersfield to like Sacramento and back in five days. And so those were like some 6 a.m. starts and some 10 p.m. ends where like I was getting up uh, an hour or two before everybody else, like fly my drone over while there wasn't anybody there. Um, but it was another one where like, it was it was also fun too. And the early mornings are the only time I'm gonna get those shots. And as much as I like to make the videos for y'all, I like to watch the videos too. Like I like to go back and be like, oh, that was a cool trip. That was a cool thing that we did. So, uh, you know, at the point that I like, I find my video boring is the point that I'm like, I need to do something else with this video because I, I like to consider myself one of my audience uh, members. Uh, Alex says, do you ever get free food on the road when people, fans, recognize you? Um, it's not generally like fans don't treat me. They don't like come up and be like, Chris, here's a coffee or something like that. And I, I like, I'm really generally not looking for handouts. Uh, sometimes I might be in a restaurant or something like that and they might realize I'm shooting content. And then at the end, they might be like, hey, don't worry about it. Um, which is super generous of them. Uh, and that was the case um, in Seal Beach uh, at the restaurant we ate at in the video in Seal Beach. I didn't know that going in and I didn't say the food was any better because I wasn't paying for it. I thought I was paying for it when I made the video. And then the owner was like, hey, don't worry about it. Um, please please tip the server. So their server got a, got a great tip um, for uh, waiting on us. And so I generally like, if I'm in a business, I generally like to I like to pay them, assuming they want to get paid. Um, but if they're really like, hey, don't worry about it, then don't worry about it. But I, I am never the person who goes in to be like, hey, 
making a video. Can I get some free food? Otherwise, peace out, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna go down the street and get some corn dogs because they'll give me free corn dog. I think that's weak. Um, and I like sometimes this is where like the coordination about like do you tell them that you're filming or do you not tell them that you're filming? Like I don't really want a different experience. Like I don't most of the time I don't really want them to treat me different or give me different food. Um, but then at the same time, in some of those restaurants in Japan, when we tell them that we're filming and we've like set it up ahead of time, then we can shoot in the kitchen and we can get some different access. And so it makes for a different video. So there's there's times uh, that I'll do both. Uh, Danielle says, what's a, what's a good amount to tip at restaurants? I have a whole video about tipping. Uh, 20% on average, I would say, is a good tip in restaurants. Uh, and Scott says, I've had a restaurant owner give me a free dessert because I was promoting their restaurant in the video. That's nice of them. I think it's a nice gesture when restaurant owners do something like that. Okay, um, so let's get to the question, is it worth it? Is it worth it, uh, Ken asks. Well, uh, after creating 1,300 videos over the past 15 years, clearly I think so, because I've been doing it for so long, I'm, I'm on the treadmill. Um, I really enjoy helping people with their travels. Uh, I also, I enjoy all the comments. I enjoy the comments on the live streams. Um, I enjoy the comments on the archives. I enjoy the comments in person when people come up and say, Chris, we enjoyed your videos. And I think, you know, when I see other YouTubers, I don't generally walk up to them when I see people, like I just see them and I'm like, oh, that's, that's that person. Um, so I'm like, how many people see us and don't say a thing? And then of those, what's the small subset that feel compelled to come up and be like, we love your videos, even if they're just walking by, which I think is, is super awesome. You know, and it's like, uh, like the trolls are real on YouTube too. You know, the people are like, this sucks, get a better microphone. What's wrong with your nose? Uh, you know, but like for those people, uh, like nobody does that in person. You know, in person, everybody's like, uh, I love your videos. Yeah, I've only had one person to really give me hate ever in person and it was a nightclub promoter in Vegas because I did in my videos that like the nightclub promoters are scams and so that person whatever they're probably a scammer so it's okay um we also enjoy the experiences that kind of being youtubers has unlocked for us um the access to go into a sake brewery in Fukushima Japan or things like that of being invited places that we just wouldn't have gone otherwise uh is super super neat and then we get to make videos about them for ourselves and for y'all uh, and yes, the, you know, sometimes when people ask about like, is it worth it? Then it becomes like, well, Chris, what about the money? Is the money worth it? You know, I've heard Mr. Beast makes a lot of money. Is it worth it? Uh, he makes ridiculous money because he's the, like the biggest YouTuber, uh, which isn't the case for like all YouTubers. And so yes, the ad revenue does help us um, offset the cost of our travels and equipment, which is indeed surprisingly expensive. Uh, it's also allowed us to bring on an editor um, to help create even more travel videos, which I, I think is phenomenal. And so that's the that's the math that I do to say like, hey, you know, if you're supporting this channel as a um, Explore member, um, or you're buying the merch, you're buying the t-shirts, you know, all of that money goes back into the channel to make more videos, make more equipment. Uh, it's not going to our uh, beach house in Newport Beach that we've uh, we've yet we've yet to buy. Okay. Um, so now the question is, is it, is it worth it for you? I don't know. Cause you know, people, when people ask like, is it worth it? Like, obviously it's worth it for me cause I'm here doing it, uh, talking to this camera. Uh, but is it worth it for you? Do you want to, do you want to point your ship in this direction? And I know that there's some people on here whose ships are pointed in this direction. Uh, we heard, uh, say hi to Matthew on here. Uh, he does a lot of Vegas videos. You know, Scott does a lot of videos, points traveler, um, so uh, I know we have a lot of, uh, I'll say creators in the audience um, or creators to be. And so uh, I think to be balanced, cause I've, I've given you my un, my personal view, uh, like why might not, why might, why might you not want to point your ship in this direction? Uh, and so the, the five reasons why you might not think it's worth it is one, having a YouTube channel is a lot of work. <laughs> like it looks like it's fun, which it is fun, but it's work too. Um, and there's a ton of behind the scenes that most people just don't see, you know, um, right before this live stream, I was, you know, downloading files off these SD cards back to my computer back here and organizing all the files. And like, even before I can start the edit, I got to like organize all these things and then I record all these things and what do I need to voice over? And I think there's a lot of people who go out on their vacation and they shoot video and then they never do a thing with it. 
because editing it is seriously hard. Uh, the second reason that you might not want to do this YouTube thing is that when you're starting up and you're just by yourself and you're a team of one, you need to be a master of many trades. You need to be a videographer. You need to be an on-camera personality or, or a microphone personality for the voiceover. You need to be an editor. You need to be a graphic artist to create the thumbnails. You need to be a creative writer to write the descriptions or your script or your outline. You need to be a musician if you want music or you need to be a travel agent to book all the stuff. You need to be a project manager to manage schedules if you've lined up like I'm going to shoot at this place at 10 and this place at 2 and I need to get there. Um, you need to be a you need to be a negotiator if you want to do brand deals. Uh, and obviously, I don't do a ton of brand deals here in the channel. But in order to um, help have an editor all the time and things like that, I've had to like, well, how do we get a few more dollars that are in? And so you've seen some brand deals recently. Which uh, let me tell you, a lot of brands they'll be like, can I give you five dollars too? The answer is like, no, sorry, it's going to be more. It's going to be more than five dollars. Um, you need to be an accountant to balance your budget. Uh, like video editing software isn't free. The music that I use in these videos in the intro isn't free. Uh, like I license that music uh, that you see there. Um, some of the B-roll drone shots that I don't take, that I get from other places, I license that footage to put in the videos as well. Uh, but the third reason why you might not want to be a YouTuber is uh, requires requires dedication. Like uh, over time, I think being successful on YouTube requires regularity. You know, TikTok might be the home of the one hit wonder where you can upload one video and it goes viral and you get a gazillion uh, followers. But on YouTube, uploading one video doesn't typically generate to a lot of subscribers or a lot of follow on views. What does that is a large library over time. The fourth reason it might not be worth it is uh, people start up on YouTube need to be ready for zero views in the beginning. You know, uploading videos that nobody watches it's tough. You know, when you watch those things, you're like, I got eight views on this video. Way to go. Uh, even if you put a lot of work into it, but we've, we've all got to start someplace. The great thing, starting from zero, is you can make mistakes and uh, nobody's watching. <laughs> nobody's watching your mistakes, which is okay. Uh, whereas if, you know, if I make a mistake, if I fall over backwards in my chair or something like that, people are watching at this point. Uh, and five, uh, you have to have a thick skin for trolls. You know, just doing anything on the internet, being a bit of a public personality, there's gonna be people that uh, crap on you, uh, but that's okay. Maybe they just had a crappy day, so they wanna send their crap someplace. I just look at the 99% of the other comments that are more positive, uh, as opposed to those ones that are crappy. My uh, general thing is don't feed the trolls, so when I get really crappy comments, then I just, I don't feed them. I either ignore them or I delete them uh, and just let those people go about their day. Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. All right, fellow explorers, so that is what it's like to travel as a YouTuber and whether it's worth it or not. So if you got a question I didn't answer before, if you asked it before and I didn't answer it, go ahead and ask it again. If you got a new question, ask it. Put a question mark at the end so I know it's a question. After we do Q&A, then we'll get to the giveaway for a Yellow Productions Crew shirt. Uh, Kathy says, you need to be persistent. Absolutely, don't give up. Michael says, Great perspective of all the tasks you need to master. I had no idea. Uh, and Kathy says, we will get rid of your trolls. Thank you so much, Kathy. For those of you who are moderators on the live stream, you all do a great job of keeping the keeping the trolls away from the live. Thank you so much. College Full of Love says, whoever thinks being a YouTuber or blogger is easy has never tried it. So many hours and things to learn. Indeed, indeed. Uh, Daniel says, when will you go to Vegas for the 2024 video? Uh, sometime before 2024. Uh, it's not immediately planned, but I do want to get there to uh, get the Fountain Blue, the new hotel opening on the Strip. Uh, that opens on December 15th. So I'm waiting to go to Vegas to make that video until the Fountain Blue opens. Uh, Michael says, what was your favorite trip video? Oh, I have so many favorite trips. Uh, you know, the, the last one I went on, is that is that like always my favorite? Um, I don't know, I enjoyed our last, uh, I enjoyed our last Japan trip, a lot of fun, stayed in a lot of great hotels, neat to see the cherry blossoms. I, you know, we don't go on a lot of crappy trips and so uh, it's hard, it's hard to be like, and I think because we go on so many um, that they're all good, they're all good for different reasons. One of the ones, a video that's probably most special to me though is the video that we did of 
Feeding the Deer in Nara, Japan from like 10 years ago. And this video is special because as we're recording this video, this is the first time we were recognized by a fan while we were recording a video. We're in Nara, Japan. I'm dressed in a kimono. I'm not in my yellow shirt. Uh, Lucy Girl's recording me. And this guy comes up to me and goes, Chris, Chris, it's me. It's, it's, it's Joey from the Philippines. I... I love your videos on Singapore, and I just wanted to say thank you so much. And that was the first time I had a fan come up to me, you know, outside of my home in California while we're on location in this remote town of Japan, um, which again, that just was like, that was like one of those like epiphany moments that I had about like, wow, well, the world is a small place. And here I've helped this guy from the Philippines on his trip to Singapore, and he let me know while I'm feeding biscuits to deer in Nara, Japan. Khan says, have you ever recorded footage for a video but never used it all the time? Uh, I, I definitely record more than what ends up in the final cuts because maybe something's boring or I need to do multiple takes. Um, I have also recorded footage for videos that I've just never uploaded because I've never been happy with them or things like that or the audio was bad and so that stuff happens all the time. I Part of the reason why um, I was really keen to uh, have Yusaku join the team and help me with the edits is also to make sure I, I do that less. <laughs> so um, the good news is uh, we've been able to like uh, the team of us now create and edit more videos than ever in the past. And so uh, between roughly Thanksgiving and Christmas this year, you can expect a new video from Yellow Productions every day, every day. Uh, I think I have about 30 videos in the backlog um, that we've edited and created this year. And as I, as I drip them out roughly two videos per week, I'm just never going to get, I'm never going to get to these at that rate. And so we're going to, we're going to clear it, uh, for what I call vlogmas that, that many YouTubers do. So many people have more time off, uh, around December. Uh, so you'll have more time to like check in and watch a video every day. That's my theory, at least. Uh, Barry says, is the sushi better in the United States or Japan? Japan, hands down. Amazing. Um, Daniel says, what city has the best museums in the U.S.? Washington, D.C. has the best museums in the U.S. The Smithsonian Museums are amazing. Uh, Tokyo Spin says, your Atami video was great. We're staying there in May. The hotel looks perfect for kids. Are you staying at the same hotel? The um, Rizanare Atami Hotel by Hoshina Resorts. It was amazing. Um, so I... Don't know if I've published my review of that hotel yet. That might be one of the ones on the queue that's coming out in December. If I haven't put it out yet, I will. Um, so stay stay tuned for that one. Uh, but it was amazing. We would definitely go back uh, and stay at that hotel. Brandon says, Vlogmas is going to be amazing. Amazing. Daniel says, LA versus San Diego. Which is better? Depends for what. Um, San Diego has a lot of good museums in Balboa Park. Uh, the LA museums are better. Like the Getty Museum is better. Like LA has like world-class museums. If you like beaches, the beaches in San Diego are better uh, than the beaches in LA. Joe says, what's the best observatory in Chicago? Uh, what, like the, the Willis Tower or something like that? That's a good observatory. I think that's the name of it. It's been a while since I've been uh, to Vegas. Uh, Bill says, we were hoping you would do a video on F1 changes in Vegas. I will not be there before the F1 races, and I tend to not like to do things that have um, short li short time span. So, like, what to do before the F1 like comes and goes pretty quickly. Um, Daniel asks, "What's the best place to stop on San Diego to Las Vegas road trip?" I need to do a whole video about that, frankly. Uh, but uh, in Barstow, uh, I did a video recently about the Barstow Station. You can check that out. Um, Eddie's World is kind of a cool stop as well. Um, so those are like two I'd recommend. Uh, but I, I am planning to do a longer video, uh, maybe on my next trip to Vegas, about like all the stops from uh, LA to Vegas. Awesome Tokyo Spin. You and your family will enjoy the Atami Hotel. David says, what's your thoughts on van life, RV camping while tra traveling? Traveling. I like hotels. I like the comfort of hotels. You, we, have not, we have not done the van life. Like we've thought about renting an RV or things like that. I've stayed in RVs at like campgrounds where you can like rent an RV and I just, I don't love it. Um, I like Park Hyatt's. I like breakfasts, uh, which you don't get RV camping. So I like the finer things. I like other people to clean my hotel room. Yeah, there we go. Not that I'm filthy, but I just feel like the RV van life is harder and uh, 
with all the other things we're doing on travel to make videos. I appreciate the help in those other areas. Uh, Angie said, did you expect your YouTube channel would change when you had a child? Like I knew it would change somehow. I don't think I could have um, anticipated exactly how it would change. You know, there's certainly many people who would have said, ah, Chris, your travel channel is going to be dead once you have a kid, which I'm glad to see it, it hasn't. Uh, and so, you know, incorporating her in the videos and things like that, um, I think it makes it fun. And I get a lot of great feedback that people like to see her in the videos too, about kind of how we have the family trip. So um, hopefully uh, y'all are enjoying the, the new spin. Point Traveler says, if anyone you know is planning on traveling to Japan, please share Chris's videos with them. I just got back and the L Productions made it so much easier to plan. Thank you uh, for that feedback, Point Traveler. Uh, Jasmine says, how do you plan where you're going to go and what videos you're going to do? That's a great question, Jasmine. I answered that right at the beginning of this video. Uh, and so I would just say, as soon as it's done, check the archive back again. Uh, we generally go places though that are uh, we want to go to because it's a destination we want to go that are uh, cheapest to go to and that we think um, like videos will do well on. But how do we plan what videos we're gonna do? Um, I don't know, I just, I kind of like, I think, I like I look at what other videos are there, what other videos are good, what other videos aren't good. I look at what unique spin we can do on it. So like on the Disney cruise, um, I also do like, I type into Google, on the YouTube search, I type in Disney cruise. And then the autocomplete of it is first timers. Like, well, if YouTube thinks that that's what most people want to search for after they type in Disney cruise, then the video I'm going to do is all about tips for your first time on a Disney cruise. Um, so for people who like search that, because that's the number one search, that they'll hopefully get back the video I made on it. And then the other one that I think is a unique proposition, I can return on that. Uh, the second video I made for the Disney cruise is, what's it like to take a Disney cruise with a toddler? Because um, there was a lot of questions I had, but what's it like to be on there with a three-year-old? And I can have some personal experience that uh, I can talk to. Uh, thank you for your support, Technospaz12. He says, I recently found your account. Love your content for the past few days. I've been watching your other live streams. Awesome. Uh, and uh, I hope you watch more. So thanks. Uh, thanks for being here. And I hope you come back. Um, Han says, do you have any plans to travel to Korea in the future? I think I've been to Korea four or five times now. Uh, I like Korea. I enjoy Korea. I don't have any media plans to go back, but I would certainly uh, go back again. Um... Alex says, please do a Thanksgiving special of sorts. All right, I'll uh, I'll consider that, Alex. Maybe we'll just do like an open Q&A stream or something like that. Uh, I don't know. Um, okay. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, every live stream, I always give away a Yellow Productions crew shirt, somebody who can answer one of my questions. And my question to you is in Ensenada, we ate fish tacos at a particular stand that invented the fish taco. What was the name of that stand? If you can answer that question, I will send you a Yellow Productions crew shirt anywhere in the world. If you don't get to win one and you want to pick one up, you can buy one from the Yellow Production shop. It's Christmas time coming up soon. So get one for your friends. Uh, and if you want to know when is the next live stream, you can sign up right here at uh, the uh, Yellow Productions update. All right. And uh, we... And now we have a winner, winner chicken dinner. Congratulations to Lisa Lee. You are the first person to say Tacos Phoenix. Uh, and that right there is indeed uh, where the Ensenada style fish taco was originated. Uh, so Lisa, send me an email to chris at yellow-productions.com. You'll find the description. Let me know your address and your size, and I'll get that shirt headed right out to you. Uh, I also want to thank all of my uh, fellow explorers that support the channel in the monthly membership program. If you're looking to support the channel and you don't want to buy a shirt, definitely uh, check that out and see if it's right for you. All right, well, fellow explorers, as always, I enjoy hanging out with y'all. Uh, and as usual, I'm not going to say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video.